News First, Newsline Prime with Araz Shaukat Ali. And a very good evening to you and welcome to Newsline Prime. Uh, live as always from the News First studios in Dawson Street in Colombo in our temporary surroundings while something nicer comes along. Uh, in the meantime, this evening, to join in a discussion that is uh, on several people's minds, in, in fact, I would have uh, to say on most people's mind, uh, we've got a very uh, vociferous uh, political critic uh, of uh, several years standing, uh, none other than Mr. Vasudeva Nanyakara. Good evening to you, Mr. Vasudeva. Good evening. Thank you very much for being on the program. Now then, Mr. Vasudeva, can I ask you straight up front, uh, on the political front, where are we headed? Uh, four months perhaps away from an election? Uh, no signs of a provincial council election, which is over 18 months old? Um, so what is going on? What is happening? Why are, they pe why are some hankering after a presidential election and pointing to the law, but there's no, isn't there any law about the provincial council election? And then some people are saying, oh, well, no, we'll have the parliamentary election first. What's going on? It looks like a sambal. Provincial council elections are overdue, as mm. you said. The question about the provincial councils could have been settled mm. either by parliament or by the judiciary. Judiciary appears to have put it off for a date somewhere in September, which makes it impossible mm. to be had compared with the time scheduled for the presidential election. Right. So therefore it is as good as not done until the presidential election is over. Don't you find it ironic that the, the very body that is supposedly there to, by the people, for the people, also sometimes known as parliament, is the same organization, the same body, that is actually withholding or stymieing the efforts to have provincial council. Not the election. parliament, the cabinet. The cabinet. The right. cabinet should bring a bill to the parliament in order to validate the previous system to hold the elections for the provincial council. Mm. As the latter system that was proposed has ended up inconclusively. But uh, it, it's, it's almost laughable if it wasn't for such a serious matter. Why are they, why is the cabinet, why do you think the cabinet is cabinet running shy? The cabinet does not want the provincial councils. Cabinet is dominated by the UNP. Yeah. UNP does not go on the provincial council. You mean they don't want a repetition? I don't know why the Supreme Court has uh, not uh, thought it necessary to have the case heard day to day and give a determination quickly so that the elections could be held. Is I it, don't know why. In your view, is it a matter of national import? It is a matter of paramount importance for the country and the people. It's the so who's uh, the petitioner? sovereignty of the people. Who's the petitioner then? Petitioner Wh is the... There are two petitioners before the Supreme Court, mm. to my knowledge, and they represent the people's uh, voice and interest for an election to the provincial councils early. But Mr. Simple, citizen of Sri Lanka, is saying to you, in October, the Supreme Court was um, didn't take so much of time in hearing um, the case against uh, uh, the, on the, about the basis of the 19th Amendment. This is a point I am making that the cases that were filed against the government set up by the President with Mahindra Rajapaksa as the Prime Minister. Yeah. Those cases were heard day to day almost, or within weeks, and the determinations were given. So what's the difference between that and this then? I think the provincial councils are not less important, because it affects the same sovereignty of the people. If it is the sovereignty of the people that was the concern, 
of the judiciary. Then the summit to the people are an issue, even in provincial councils. Right. So, okay. Um, so it, it's almost almost fair to say that we won't have provincial council elections. Yes. It, it look, does increasingly look like that to you? No, it is as bad as that. Right. And it is now settled that it won't be had. Right. Okay. What about the this clamor from some quarters? Uh, how far it's true, we don't know. So we're asking you. What about this move towards trying to have parliamentary elections before the presidential? There are two, uh, not schools of thought, two forces of uh, political aspiration. Mm. One force would want uh, parliamentary election, yeah. where you don't end up with a clear winner. Mm. The others who want to defeat the UNP decisively want a presidential election. When at the end of which, if the UNP is defeated, UNP is defeated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In a parliamentary election, it is neither won nor lost. Somewhere there. That gives a good background mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. parties on the two sides to think in terms of a joint government. Right. Uh, a question, uh, actually we do encourage our uh, viewers to uh, send us our question, uh, your questions by SMS only, not by WhatsApp, but SMS only. 0772-300-305 as the card would have told you on the screen. The first one here, uh, one of the first anyway. Please ask the Honourable Wasu David why he objected to provincial council system when introduced in 1987. Did you? Did you object? No, no, you I didn't think that's a mistake. Right. About the person's concern. Yeah. We supported the provincial councils when it was introduced. Mm. We went around the country taking the risk of being shot down and assassinated by the JVP. Yeah. Calling for the provincial council. Okay. We didn't oppose provincial council. Okay. Okay. I belong to the LSSP then. Right. So the, the, that that's uh, not correct. That's okay. Not correct. Now then. Factually incorrect. Okay. Uh, thank you for clarifying that. Now, Mr. Vasudeva, what about this business about what is who is going to be the candidate from from let's say your camp? I have no clear idea. Right. I have no clear idea. Are you? I only know that. Our party proposes Chamal Rajapaksa as the most suitable candidate. But we have um, Mr. Gotabi Rajapaksa saying that he will be the candidate. Yeah, because there are many on our camp yeah. who have sponsored this case. I see. What would, is it fair to ask you what your, uh, your choice would be? Chamal Rajapaksa. Right. You said that without even thinking. That's that's your choice. No, we considered oh. and our party proposed his name. Right. You when you mean our party, is it your Democratic party? Democratic left front. Ah, I see. Okay. So you all said Chama Rajpaksa. All right. Does the the magic words haven't come out of mind the Rajapaksa's mouth yet? Mind the Rajapaksa will have to consult all parties. Who are in the joint, uh, what do you call this? A joint, joint opposition. Right. Okay. So he will have to, or he will. is that just. Um, I think we have it next Tuesday, the leaders' meeting, the joint opposition, what which is, will consider this. Yes. Sure. I know it may be four months off or, or whatever, but why? so much of secrecy? Isn't it better to announce it now and then carry on regardless? I think so. If they are so confident of victory... No, I think it is overdue. We should have announced about two months ago. And so we what should are you, have got what, ready for the election what campaign. Are you, what are you all waiting for? Are you all waiting for the astrologer or what? Well, we should not be waiting for anything. But for the response of the people. And the response of the people would have been uh, well expressed 
and well manifested if the announcement was made. Right. So, <clears throat> I want to ask you this. In this quest for democracy, transparency, accountability, responsibility, uh, eradicate nepotism and political patronage, where do you fit? Why can't you be the candidate? Do you, have, do you not have any aspirations? I have no aspiration, but I, I can well be the candidate if I'm sponsored or if I am uh, chosen or if I am... Chosen by whom? By, by my camp. Right. We belong to one camp mm -hmm. and that camp must make that choice. Yeah. But I have no aspiration. Okay. But I will not be excluded if that was the choice of our camp. Are you there are several parties which form the joint opposition? Are you concerned that uh, the fate that uh, what it, well, the fate that uh, was uh, Kumar Welgama will also happen to you? No, Kumar Welgama is on a different uh, venture of his own. Yeah, he he was he was a solo actor. Yeah, that that's what I that's what I observe about him and his pronouncements. Right. You mean he didn't have others? Others didn't support him even quietly? No, I don't think so. And he is not patiently waiting for the consultative process. You mean he was? A I make my announcement about our choice. Yeah. But we are all the time. Uh, waiting for the consultative process to ultimately determine yeah. who the candidate will be. So while you have your own view, you can also be a part of the consultative process. Right. Um, okay. What is your what is the ideal candidacy? What, what is, is the ideal combination? Well. A person who has a strong commitment for the well-being of the people, yeah, which can be ensured by a welfare state. Secondly, a national economy which will serve the greater interest of the nation, which is a part of our national security. Thirdly, the Democratic structures need to be further developed in order to make them more meaningful. Fourthly, bringing about uh, national integration. Mm. Fourthly, bringing about a uh, sea change in the rural sector in order to transform the economy. These are the issues about which any aspirant candidate should be concerned about and should be committed to. Mm. Well, putting it broadly, it could be said the ideal would be a left of centre candidate. And who do you have your own? It's Jamal. Jamal. You've worked it all out, haven't you? Yes. Right. Well, uh, another question from a, a yes, viewer. Don't you think that it is wise to go for a parliamentary election rather than a presidential e election because the next PM will have more powers as per the 19th Amendment? Thank you. The next PM will have more powers and the next president will have less powers. Yeah. So therefore, we need to be more concerned about the parliamentary election which elects a PM. That's his argument. Yeah. My point is we have to decisively defeat the UAP and therefore we must go for the presidential election. Mm -hmm. After decisively defeating the UNP, then we should go for the parliamentary election. Okay. Where we will have the advantage of having defeated the UNP decisively. So okay. it's a political question, not a constitutional question. Now then, uh, many questions are coming about uh, uh, these agreements that are um, 
uh, being signed or being proposed to be signed with the Americans. I'll take that up in just about a minute. Um, let's see here. Uh, how can Gotabe Rajapaksa become a candidate with so many cases against him? It means they will be encouraging a person of non-integrity to become a president. Cases are not conclusive about the integrity of a person. Right. It is the ultimate conviction or acquittal that yeah. determines the matters related to integrity. That apart, when you have several cases which are pending against you, yeah. that is a matter that needs consideration in ultimately deciding about his or her candidature. Mm -hmm. That I agree. Okay. Um, Not on the basis of integrity. Uh, here we go. Yeah. Please ask the veteran Mr. Vasudeva, who is a veteran in the political field, uh, why his choice for a future president uh, has to be like Chamal Rajapaksa. Because, as I said earlier, while he has his commitment to the several matters that I enumerated, yeah. he is left of center candidate. Um, Another one. As a leftist, do you like to propose Mr. Dinesh Gunawardena as the next presidential candidate? Yes. Dinesh will be alternative candidate. Chamal Rajapaksa because he will be able to carry a larger number than Dinesh. But if it is not Chamal, well, Dinesh can be a candidate alternatively. Where does Vasudeva Nanayakara fit? I'm not aspirant. Okay. You counting yourself out? Out. Why? Because I am too old now to go into this kind of fray. Right. Well, you know, at least you've, you've said that. Uh, I have another question for you, but this is now uh, we're leaving the political arena directly and going to something where the political arena is on the periphery. And that is the matter of uh, the um, Attorney General's apparently orders to the acting IGP to um, and uh, well they've been remanded anyway uh, and that is the former or oh, well the, the 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 IGP Puji Jasundra and the former Defence Secretary uh, Hemisri Fernando. Yeah. What what do you say about that? About what? They are being about the indicted, About uh, they are being indicted for the 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 charges have not been uh, uh, been named yet. But is what are the charges likely to be? Is it likely to be criminal negligence? Is it likely to be uh, likely to be manslaughter, or is it likely to be murder? Criminal negligence. And what? what my, and what is your legal interpretation of uh, criminal negligence? In negligence this? of such high degree, right? Which almost tantamount to Knowing the consequences, yeah, or ought to have known the consequences, yeah, if such neg negligence was practiced. Okay, um, and if it was uh, manslaughter, it won't be manslaughter, to my understanding. And then, therefore, it won't even be murder. No, <laughs> certainly not. Right. So when. And if these people are formally charged and if a trial comes to pass, is that the end of the story? Is it just these two people's fault? That's it, is it? No, that's as far as the two people are concerned. Yeah. But there is an uh, investigation going on. Yeah. And which investigation will probe the background? whether there was a conspiracy, hmm. whether there was a connivance yeah. between certain parties yes. in order to neglect their duties in the way they have done. Hmm. What went on behind them in order that they may not do what they ought to have done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and what about 
the others, how do the others, how do you hold them responsible? Who? We had the Cardinal saying that the Prime Minister said, well, you know, we knew, but the law and order wasn't under me. Nobody's talking about that now, but there is footage to say that that is what the Cardinal said. No, the, the important thing is to whom did Pujita Jasundara owe his accountability? <coughs> Legally, officially, and personally. Everybody knows that it was the Prime Minister. So if that be so, yeah. what role did the Prime Minister have in dissuading Pujita Jayasundara from taking action as he ought to have done? These are matters that need to be gone into. They will come out in the course of the trial. But is the Prime Minister likely to be given a set of questions written down and expect an answer to come in the form of an affidavit and therefore avoid the uh, one of those main things of a trial which is uh, cross-examination. Prime Minister is not on trial yet so therefore but that question in Sri Lanka arise. will we ever see uh, uh, what yes. has happened in Korea? In Korea yes. we have four of their four or five of their president. leaders well the, yes because the president there is uh, you know has more power than the Prime Minister yes. and five of them were given jail sentences of which they all five have served some or part of that yes in the future when this government is no more that is a possibility unless there is some other underhand agreements underhand agreements between whom between the powers that be did the Batalanda Commission ever come to a conclusion? No, it has not. I have given a copy of the Batalanda Commission to the President Secretary and asked him to certify that as a true copy in order to base myself on which, in order to raise certain questions in Parliament and also to raise certain issues uh, in, with the Attorney General. Right. Now then, uh, we're, we're going to jump to another subject here. Thank you for all those questions. Keep sending them. Uh, 0772 by SMS only, please. There are U.S. officials in Jaffna visiting villages and asking the people there on questioning them about what their issues are. Why this sudden interest? Who are they to ask these questions from our people? Who, who are... The U.S. officials, there ah, yes. are some U.S. US officials. officials are very concerned about our dilapidated schools and about the knowledge of English of our people, particularly in the eastern coast. Well, they're in Jaffna. The, we have footage Jaffna which will be on included. our news late, later on tonight on TV1. But uh, who, <laughs> isn't it the, the most valid or the most potent question to ask is, who asked them, the Americans, to go and visit there? I obviously, this government has done so. Because the Americans are unlikely to just pop down from a plane and then no, say, no, well, they would like have to asked, me. we want to do the following, what you call this, uh, uh, what you call this, uh, uh, what relations? Uh, Foreign relations. No, no, no. The, 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 the public relations. Right. We want to uh, practice public relations. I see. We want to uh, experiment with public relations uh, in the paths that we have chosen. Yes. In order that we may cultivate the people. Right. And I'm sure this is decided together with this government. The government had been planning to get the US soldiers here. How under you, the uh, sofa yeah. and also under the AXA yeah. and therefore they want the people in the northern eastern areas to get used to the Americans as friends. What does citizen Nanyakara feel about letting foreign troops or others, contractors if you like, foreigners, 
non-Sri Lankans. Entry to Sri Lanka where those people will be operating outside of the laws of Sri Lanka. Carrying have, their weapons carry, carrying in their, their weapons, uniforms. In their uniforms, in out of their uniforms, their contractors, all of them will enjoy diplomatic immunity, immunity from uh, immigration checks, um, immunity from the laws of this country. How does citizen Nanya Kara feel about that? Well, this is coming within the penal code as uh, offence against the state. No this offense. comes within the penal code as offence against the state. So the, who who's, who's guilty of that then? Obviously the government. The government headed by the Prime Minister and the President will have to absolve himself. On what grounds? Because he didn't, he won't sign? Because it is the Secretary of the Defence Ministry yes. who had gone and signed that AXA agreement based on which certain goods were brought to Katnayaka yeah. by planes, transport planes of the US Navy. Yeah. Then other US Navy planes of a smaller size came to Katnayaka, loaded these items and took them away to Stenin, that ship yes. lying outside Trinkamali. All this happened under the AXA cross-service agreement. And so, Sister Nanekara is worried? Of course, not only worried, I feel threatened. Have you, have you met with the Prime Minister and expressed your displeasure? No, you your haven't concern? had the occasion, but I told him in the Parliament. I showed him a letter of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and said, look, they are negotiating for an agreement in order to accommodate the US forces here. Will these agreements or the potential to sign these agreements, this whole theory uh, or, or, or AXA which has already been signed and so far which hasn't been, will these feature prominently in any campaign either at parliamentary or presidential election level? In any election campaign, it will be uh, one of the most prominent. What will be number one then? If this is it not won't be number one. No. It will be prominently uh, issue that will be in the campaign. What will be number one? Number one will be the cost of living of the people, the standards of living of the people, which have kept on uh, uh, declining. I have another question from a viewer. Uh, the AXA agreement, the SOFA draft, uh, should be revealed to the public. Why hasn't that happened? I've asked, why haven't you tabled this in Parliament? This Prime Minister lied in Parliament. Right. When I showed him the document, he said this is an old agreement. But I told him in the next page you find the date of 2017. Yeah. Then how can it be old? You have renewed it. So then what? Then he said, I will make a statement which he never made. So he's lying. Isn't he, he obviously. This is not the first time he had lied to the Parliament. He has misrepresented to the Parliament. He has misdirected the Parliament. Misled the Parliament. You, you, you're saying this with uh, responsibility, are you not? Well, it is not my responsibility. It is his own conduct right. which has brought on him. But what you're saying is factual. Uh, factual, obviously. Right. About the bond scam and now again on this AXA. Right. Now, uh, do you seriously think that the, uh, the American Secretary uh, who uh, of state who now postponed his visit or who says he's not coming to Sri Lanka but a deputy is coming. Do you think the deputy will get a chance to sign this agreement after all? What agreement? So far. I don't think so. The president has said there is no signing of any agreement. Have you all not asked for the, this speaker to, uh, to, ha to debate this in, in the house? We have asked. And, and we have asked yeah. that this be tabled in Parliament. Yeah. In the Security Council, it was undertaken by Marapana, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, to table it. But so far not done so. And amongst all of this, we have a statement from the Prime Minister that uh, no matter what, these tabs are going to be given away. <laughs> yes. Is that the most important thing? <laughs> yes. 
that's uh, i suppose the the humor that is at the end of tragedy was it even an echo it's been wonderful the half an hour's gone quick as a flash but thank you very much for being on uh, newsline prime we i've uh, enjoyed it tremendously thank you very much thank you and that's the way it was on newsline prime uh, ladies and gentlemen have a great evening ahead be safe and god bless news first newsline prime with faraz shaukatali